So it's almost a week to go till the Atlas Mountain Race. Uh, this time next week, I shall be in Marrakesh. It's Friday. So as, as the race is in Morocco, it's, it's primarily kind of deserty mountains. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm guessing that it's going to be pretty hot during the day. Uh, forecast is showing around 30 degrees. Uh, but the unknown is how cold it's going to get at night. Well, good morning. Welcome to Marrakesh. Uh, there's lots of real fast guys here. I imagine a few guys will absolutely smash it up the first climb and probably ride through the night as well. Um, so I think I'll probably play conservatively as usual and try and look after myself. So hopefully I'll do some updates as I go along. Not quite sure what signal will be like out in the mountains. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll try and do some updates. Uh, my SIM card doesn't work, so I have to wait for Wi-Fi. Yesterday, everyone went off super hot and I rode my own pace and slept two hours last night in a cave, which is pretty cool. Um, and I made it to the, the Fable gas station, which sells everything. And basically the whole field is here um, because the river is really high. So basically we're stuck here until the river level is low enough to cross.
getting light and uh, yeah it's hard I tried to stay up as late as I could so that when I slept I could wake up at four and not lose too much time sleeping that way it's only three hours until it gets light but still a drag though definitely hard work long nights My man, Joffrey. I'm filming you. <laughs> Having fun? Funny for you to get down here. <laughs> yeah. It's like me in Mars. <laughs> <laughs> Temperature's gone through the roof. Saying 36 at the moment. In direct midnight, uh, midnight, midday sun. Plus, we're at 1600 meters here, so yeah, it's uh, scorching. I've got to try and keep them, keep up them to the checkpoint. The CP2 is now about 25 miles away, so making steady progress. It was a hard, hard race. Um, so I established quite early on that maybe, maybe I shouldn't be chasing and I just ride my race, and it, it kind of took the pressure off. And CP2. then obviously my phone didn't work, which I mean it's a very much a personal problem and it made the race so much better because I was just unconnected I didn't know I didn't know where I was I didn't know where other people were and to be honest I didn't really care okay I was just enjoying the experience um, and I think that's why I enjoyed it so much because I didn't push the sleep deprivation too much I rode hard all day I didn't stress about stopping for an omelette and I, I looked after myself so I think I came through it strongly I finished strongly Maybe I could have trimmed a bit of time here and there. Um, there's always the what ifs after a race. But I don't think it's a main race. Stage shift ending into the night shift. Um, I might have made a bit of an error though. I've uh, stopped the last resupply and there. there's only a tiny shop, had no water, and I haven't quite got enough. Um, because it's going to be 50 miles to the next section to the next shop and if all goes to plan I'll be there about about one in the morning um, or maybe if I sleep a bit earlier so I'm not sure the shops will be open there um, so I'll either have to wait it out or push on but the next shop after that is 30 miles so it could be, it could be a Thursday all night but just as a backup I brought two litres of coke not sure if that's any good for hydrating, but at least I can kid myself it's doing some good. Let's see how it goes. Not a bad place to see the sunrise. The old colonial road, I believe. Um, yeah, I sort of come out. I survived my water scare last night. To get but the top up from uh, one of the small towns from someone's house, just asked the guy at the door and he got some water. Luckily, I've got some chlorine tablets. I, uh, I'm not exactly fully hydrated, but I've been in a lot worse states.
out so far this morning. 30 miles. It's only been four and a half hours. I'm very bored of it and there's potential for some food at the end of it, which I just really do. Loads of food, loads of water. So yeah, hopefully this thing will be over soon because and I guess guess I'll just keep plumbing away at it. Loads of food, loads of water. And I guess guess I'll just keep plumbing away at it. Plumbing away at it. I genuinely think it's one of the, the best race experiences I've had for a number of reasons. I mean, it's a beautiful race. The country's beautiful. The people are amazing. And then also I was just in my own dream world. So I was just in my own dream world. Slowly getting there. And there should be an auberge coming up soon. I think I'm gonna stop and have one last meal. Just all the heat today. My stomach's getting a bit, a little bit funny. So I think I need to not pedal for a few minutes. Nice for dinner. Got some energy. Had a Berber omelette. They're ready in like uh, some 10 minutes. So by the time that I'd faffed to sort my stuff out, dinner was ready. So nice and efficient. Got about 120 miles to go in total. Might try and push, push through the night. Long story. I'll explain later. Well, I, I kind of, um, I'm not very good at maths and numbers. They're not my forte. <laughs> especially sequencing and getting things in the right order. And, uh, and it turns out printing off the right um, cue sheet. <laughs> so so at Atlas Mountain Race, they give you a resupply thing. And um, I basically, the route changed a bit from 2020, the first edition. It was a different finish. And um, I, di I didn't figure out that I'd printed out the, uh, the incorrect cue sheet. <laughs> so it was, it was the same all the way to the last checkpoint. So that was the final checkpoint, which I have to admit, I massively was not expecting that. I was trying to do the sums last night and I was really delirious and I got totally confused and I thought it was 50k away. So I went to bed at the side of the road uh, because I was a bit of a mess. Um, and then it was like probably less than 10 miles downhill, free willing. Some, some guy was in the street waving at me and I thought, oh, why is this guy in this town waving at me at like three in the morning? It's just, what's going to happen now? And then I looked up, I was like, oh, it's a checkpoint, it's a volunteer. <laughs> oh, first light's taking absolutely ages this morning. Just, uh, fatigue is catching up. Struggling to keep my eyes open, but luckily as soon as that first bit of light comes over the hill, it sorts me out a bit.
the last significant off-road sector and of course it starts with a hiker bike it's just super marbly hard to ride down in the valley all the way up there hiker bike <laughs> horrific I think that's one of the best bits about these ultras because everyone finishes as an equal because everyone's had to, to go through the experience and in actual fact if, if you're one of the faster guys I always say this it's, it's easier because there's, yeah. there's less days out there you know, there's less days camping there's less days trying to figure out what food you're eating um, and I think it means the, the faster guys often have a hell of a lot of respect for the slower guys because like, let's face it we don't want to be out there a few miles and then we're done